guess, uh, you know, first now, um, talked about it really quickly after the UNLV b- game, but playing New Mexico, you know, obviously they've got some some guys who can score the ball. Yeah. Uh, what stands out to you about them now that you look at more luck? Well, I think what stands out to me now is is the balance that they have. I mean, Williams has been way more involved the last month and a half. You know, he's averaging 16 a game. He's doing a great job. You know, those two guards have been so explosive throughout the year, and they seem like they've all settled into their roles a little bit better. And, I think they're playing good basketball. There are some, you know, some tall guys in the league, but but he he's he's a thick, strong, yeah. big guy. So what, what kind of a challenge is is Williams for a team? They, they, they do a good job both offensively and then they do a good job defensively protecting the rim. And they're hard to score on, and uh, but they really, like I said, they're really really explosive offensively, and that's that creates a lot of problems for them. They're the kind of guys that that scare you in the fact that sometimes it doesn't matter how you guard them, they can score. And, that's not what you want. It's a defense you want to be able to. So I guess it, it becomes a situation where you just got to kind of let them make every position tough on them and, and uh, you know, hope your offense does a good job also. Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of the point in time in the schedule where you guys really hit the grind. I mean, I know you guys had the early bye, but in the last week you've gone to Wyoming and yeah. UNLV and now you come back home but you have the host. New Mexico is obviously one of the perennial powers of the league. Yeah, this is, uh, we looked at this stretch a long time ago, we knew it was going to be a tough stretch. And, uh, you know, like I said, you're at Miami, and you're at UNLV, you want to come home. And I think sometimes teams have a tendency to relax a little when they come home. And if we do that, we're in big trouble because New Mexico is, you know, one of, like you said, one of the premier programs of the year. And this is certainly one of the best teams in the world. You know, I, I know it's been, it happened a couple days ago, but how do you guys kind of move on from that second half? Because it's been, it's been a while since you guys have. They played a you know a second half of basketball like that. Yeah, that, that you know that was, that was a tough half. I think we had some big things, we had some big shots, and you know, our guys battled like they always do. We just made some mistakes that maybe uh, you can't afford to make on the road. And they, they seem to make. You, Robin played a, a good amount in that game. How, how do you think he did? Especially kind of you know he hadn't had a ton of minutes leading yeah. up to it, and it, it seems like. For a guy that hasn't played, I was really pleased with what he was able to step in. That's you know sometimes tough duty. He hurt his ankle and he was out for a long time, and, uh, and probably a little rust even. And he came in and did some really good things, and he's got some. He's got a promising future, and um, you know uh, he gives us another weapon inside and. A, probably one of our biggest bodies that can really maybe help us on the boards down the stretch. His, his first two minutes he had two fouls, but it seemed like he kind of adjusted himself yeah. after that and was able to play a little more charge, minutes. Took a big got yeah. a big offensive rebound, and you know, had a, had a nice play when they kind of dropped in the pass in the transition, and a nice play when he was rolling down the middle of the key. So he's got, he's got some ability. He's got great hands. He's got good instincts on the block. And like I said, he's you know, one of our biggest bodies. There, there was a few weeks ago where you kind of said that there was going to be a point in time in the season where he was going to have to contribute or you, you anticipated that he would contribute. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's just, I credit to him too, he just comes to work every day. He's got a great attitude. And, you know, that's what you want out of a guy that's trying to fight his way into the, into the rotation. And he certainly has done that. He's just, he's proud and he keeps working. And, you know, yeah, that's promising for us because he's a freshman that, that, you know, we got for four years that he can be How do you like playing this afternoon game at 3 o'clock? Love it. Yeah, I love it. I think it's great for the fans. Good time. Uh, 3 o'clock is about perfect size. Start time. You come enjoy the game, then go ahead go have a nice dinner downtown or something. With the uh, um, Mike Thompson got over 1,000 points for his career during during that game, and obviously he played a pretty good game. Those emotions, you know, you never know how someone's going to react, but yeah. it seems like he's a pretty even-keeled guy. But He is. He's a really even-keeled guy. And it was, Probably stirred up a ton of emotions in the kid, and, and just be able to play through that was pretty impressive. Uh, I was proud of him. I think he was a little upset that he turned the ball over. You know, a few uncharacteristic ones, and, but you know that was kind of reflective of the team for that. Game. Um, the, the the beat thing now has become kind of a little <laughs> phenomenon. What you know, I, yeah. they mentioned during the broadcast and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I was getting photos of people with beat lemonade and things like that. What, oh, yeah. you know, what's what's that been like? Just hey. what's it been like in the last week with with all that stuff? Any way we can help the local beat farmers, we feel good about it. So uh, you know, that's a big industry here in the valley. And, uh, hopefully, it, it takes off. I think there might be something to it. Did you drink some before you ran that mile, or no? Because oh, yeah, okay, absolutely. It, okay. Uh, 
No question. I think it's uh, it's contributing to some good things. I think it's helping our guys, especially you know, playing at altitude. Is the best part of it seeing their reactions when they drink it? Oh yeah, that's. I never watch them. I you know, I just Coach uh, Newman gives it to him. On, on the bus. Okay. Yeah, I saw Zach. So <laughs> I have one more question about, about about chartering for you guys. How important was it? That, that was something you really kind of pushed for about two years ago. You know, what, what was it that, that you what was it that you really kind of wanted to, to push for it and you know make make that part of this program? Well, I think which it's in, you know, it, it, like you said, it, we are in the grind right now. I and mean, we talked to programs throughout the country, and um, everybody's you know struggling, and everybody's kind of running in sand a little bit. And the guys are getting tired, and their health is guys are getting sick, and you know, the immune system things like that. My job as a coach and our job as, as, as staff is to take care of our players and make sure we give them the best advantages we can give them. And, you know, we ask these guys over two semesters to be away from school and miss school. And this, you know, during the league, you miss the most school that you, that you, you know, all throughout the year. And so it helps you minimize that. It helps you keep their health a little better. It helps you get them rested. And it helps the staff air quicker for the, for the next game. So it's a valuable part of what a, a basketball program can do, and it's a big advantage to you know, programs to do it. And, you know, if we want to be in the top of the Mountain West, uh, you know, we have to do those kind of things, and, and they're important. And, you know, we're pretty about how we do it and, and how we uh, you know, how we pick it out, which ones work the best. But um, it's, it's a valuable tool, and it's a great asset for our program. You know, with, uh, I know we've talked with you in recent weeks about the development of Paris, but um, you know, there, there's a point in that game on uh, on Wednesday where you know you even maybe maybe try to take it over for a second, and I kind of mean it in a good way. It was almost like at Wyoming when Lonnie kind of realized you know he needed to be the spark yeah. that, at that point in time. But I mean, does, does he obviously have that ability you know, as well? Yeah, and that you know what was really nice about it too is uh, you know you start to see glimpses of what he could be in the future and. Basketball means a lot to this kid, and you know, I asked him to go rebound. He went rebound, and that that's really encouraging to me because you know, if you got a player that you can ask him to do something, he can go do it. Uh, that's a good sign. But, you know, he, he did some good things. He was on the verge of doing great things if he makes his free throws and he you know, took probably one shot that was a little bit too, you know, out of context at that time. But you know, as a freshman, he's learning. He's getting better and better every game. But that's encouraging for me and for our staff is that we lose Mikey, we lose Tico, we lose Matthew, we lose a lot of guards. And Paris is going to have a lot of riding on him next year. 